Hello people, let's dive right in. So first off in our world scene, let's take our enemy and make sure that the player is not getting created at first inside of the chase zone. So just move away the enemy from the player. Then what we want to do is make sure that our enemy will be able to follow our player. So for that, we will use the pathfinding algorithm already made inside of Godot. To use it, we're going to need to create a navigation region 3d in our world scene then how does this node work pretty simple we just need to add as a child of the navigation region the surface that we want to calculate the pathfinding on so let's take the navigation region put it in our floor static body and then take the mesh instance that is the floor so the floor mesh instance Take it, slide it as a child, then select the navigation region in the inspector, create a new navigation mesh, and then press bake mesh. So as you can see, there's now a navigation mesh. One thing that we can do is make sure that our goblin will be able to find a way around the tavern. So we're going, we're going to select the tavern and slide it as a child of the navigation region 3D, and then bake it again, and boom. The tavern has been baked in the pathfinding map. Good. Now we can go into our actual enemy and code the movements. So for this, we're going to need the variable speed. We're going to need the variable acceleration. So Axel will be equal to 10 and we will need the variable target. The target will be the target that our enemy will be moving towards. So in our case, it will be the player. Let's begin by setting our target. So in the function uh, on chase area body entered, so this is a function that gets emitted when the player enters the chase area. So when we enter the chase area, we want the target to be equal to body target equal body because body will be equal to the player because the body variable will be equal to the body that enters the zone. So in our case, the player will be entering the chase zone and then we can set the target equal to the body, so equal to the player. When the player leaves the zone, we want to make sure that the target is now set to null because the player is not in the zone. And then we can fix an error that we made in the last episode. Putting the function behaviors in the process function it was a mistake because when we cal were calculating movements, for a physics body, so for a character body 3D in this example, we need to use the physics process function and then select everything we put in the behaviors function and paste it in the physics process. And then we can delete all these lines. And now the movements and the behaviors will be processing in the physics process. Good. So for the movements, in order for our enemy to be using the uh, navigation region, we need to add a new node that is called a navigation agent. So navigation agent 3D. Now the enemy will be able to use the navigation region to find his path. Then we need a new variable that will be referencing the navigation agent. So let's say export var nav agent navigation agent export means that we want to export the variable in the inspector of the node that has the script so enemy has now a variable that we can assign in the inspector var nav agent so nav agent is the name and two dots navigation agent 3d is telling the enemy that the variable that we expect is a navigation agent 3d so i'll only be able to assign a navigation agent so if I press on assign, as you can see, there's only this node available. Then select it and the variable will be set. Good. Now let's go in our uh, state chase. Uh, we can remove print chasing because now we will see that our goblin will be chasing us. So and we can also re and we can also remove velocity equal vector vector three dot zero. Uh, because we will modify velocity to be equal to the movement uh, that we want. So what we need to do first, we're going to set 
the navigent target so navigent dot target position so we are referencing the navigate the nav agent variable that we said before so navigent dot target position will be equal to target dot global position so target is the player because we said it right there and that the target was equal to the body so this means player dot global position then can create a new variable that we will call direction and the variable direction will be equal to the nav agent dot get next path position minus global position so this line will give us the distance that we're going to parkour because we are getting our next position and we're diminishing it by our actual position so we get the difference between the two then Let's normalize the direction to make sure that the vector we're getting is equal to one because we want our movement to be consistent and always at the same speed. Then we'll set velocity to be equal to velocity.lerp and we will lerp between the direction times speed at with a weight of acceleration times delta so we are lurping towards the direction times speed so we are closing distance between our actual point and the direction times the speed so we are we are making our vector longer to our speed value and then we're making sure that we reach this point with our acceleration so now there's one more thing we must do is make sure that at the end of our physics process we add a function move and slide and the function move and slide will be making sure that we take in consideration the velocity of our enemy if we now test it if i get closer to the enemy he gets to me as you can see as you can see he's floating obviously we don't want that but what we'll do we will say if not is on floor we'll say that velocity that's why minus equal gravity so if not is on floor velocity dot y minus equal gravity will ensure that if we're not touching the floor the enemy will go down perfect then we want our animations to be working so we need to reference our animation player under our goblin export that we made local in the last tutorial in order to do that we're going to do just like for the nav agent we're going to export a variable this we'll call animation player and we as expect an animation player and then if we select our enemy animation player is right there i can click there and assign it the animation player node good then what we need to do is when the state is equal to idle let's call animation player dot play and let's enter the string name of the animation that we want in our case let's select our animation player and we can see all the names of our animation so idle we'll say idle be careful uh it is case sensitive so if there's a capital letter at the, at the beginning you must type it with a capital letter then walk when he attacks let's say punch and when he dies die just like that we can test it as you can see he's now animating and if i get closer to him is chasing me good uh just a little mistake i just realized i made uh i we have to set direction direction to be equal direction dot normalized uh because otherwise it does not do anything so just say direction equal direction dot normalize and then the last thing we need to do is make sure that the goblin is actually facing us so in order to do that very simple we're going to use the function look at and then as you can see we need a target we, ne we need to set where is the up direction and then if we want to use the front of the model so first off with the target the target will be a vector tree and we will reference a target dot global position so our player global position dot x because this is the first input of the vector, so it's x. Then in y, we want to set our own global position 
because we want Goblin to look always at the same height and not be looking at an angle. Global dot uh, global position dot y and then for the z uh same thing as right there target dot global position but this time on the z so dot z then for the up direction we want to use vector three dot up and then we want to use the front of the model so we just say true good we want we want the goblin to look at us when he's chasing but also when he's punching us so we can copy paste this line into the state attack then we can go and test it and the goblin is looking at us and if we get closer he's attacking us and turning around good i hope you liked it leave a like subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions don't forget to join the discord and see you in the next episode